Hello friends, and welcome to The Hanged Man in the Moon. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm pleased to meet you. If you've been here before, thank you for returning. I'm truly honored. Friends, if you are a returning visitor, you know that this is my series. In fact, this is the sixth episode of my series of a dive into a remarkable deck called The Tarot of the Holy Light by Christine Payne Towler. A brilliant deck and a deck that I'm falling more and more in love with each day that I'm reading with it and working with it. And so the process that I'm using, if you don't know, is in the morning I draw a card. And then to help me to um, understand the meaning of the card, my understanding of the card, understand my understanding, that's what I'm trying to say, I use three cards from RWS, an RWS deck called the Light Seekers Tarot. And I pull a significator, um, uh, an obstacle card, and then an advice card, just to get a little bit more understanding of that first card that I drew, because it's a very different system from what I'm used to. And then I live my day, and at the end of the day, then I go to the book. Then I read the meaning of the card as it was intended by the creator, and I reflect on that meaning and what I experienced during the day. So, the card that I got today was the Four of Co Swords in Reverse. The Four of Swords in Reverse. And the uh, astrological associations here are uh, Aquarius ruled by Mercury. And again, this was in reverse. But let me show you the card right side up momentarily. What do we see? We see the um, original hermaphrodite of each of us. Yeah, Both male and female of the original soul joined in union on a bed and above them three swords and one below similar to what we would see in a Rider Waite Smith layout. Yeah, three swords above and one below. We have the sun, we've got the various flowers indicating alchem al alchemical um, symbols. Uh, we have the lion and the eagle showing a, giving us the marriage of elements. These, there's a lot of alchemy going on in this card. And in the upright position, well, I won't get there yet, but so I got this in reverse. And when I think of the Rider Waite Smith for Rider Waite, yeah, Smith, Four of Swords, I think of upright meditation, recovery, recuperation, reverse. It could be mental fog, inability to think, inability to rest, perhaps illness. And so, I wasn't anticipating a really exciting day today when I got this card. And so I pulled three cards from, again, the Light Seekers Tarot. Let me show you the cards that came up right now. So the cards that came up were the Two of Pentacles, which is a card that is repeated in the recent week or so, um, the King of Cups, and the Two of Swords. Two, two cards, right? Two of Pentacles, Two of Swords. Significance, Pentacles, Advice, Wands. I'm two of, two of Wands. So, Two of Swords. Balancing stuff. Balancing matter. Balancing uh, resources. Yeah? Balancing here water and fire. Balancing stuff in the material world. So, the significance of the reversed Four of Swords, according to this card, is that it's going to require, it is a balancing act, which is interesting. And the obstacle could be over pacification. Yeah, the King of Cups is the one who can ride all of the waves. So, not being able to ride all of the waves, being emotionally stable, could be an obstacle. I suppose it could be. Or maybe not being able to do this would be an obstacle, I suppose. And then we got the Two of Wands as advice. So, the advice of this, of <clears throat> needing to balance, and perhaps the 
potential of being carried away by emotional upheaval is to keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye focused on the direction you want to be heading in. Even though you're not moving yet, keep your eye out there on what on what we want, the direction we want to be moving in, right? Makes sense. And especially having those two twos flanking the King of Cups was very interesting. So I lived my day, and then I read from the book. Um, and let me read from the book for you, because I'm still processing this a bit. And uh, the this card, Upright, is an indication of being able to see our original face, according to the book. Yeah, Being able to see our original face, as the Zen people would say. So, that means being able to see beyond the cloud and mask of ego into our original, eternal mind. In reverse, what do we get? In reverse, it becomes all about the ego. Yeah, The ego is more directly involved, which leads to greater denial and resistance. Okay, so we've got ego, denial, and resistance. It could come courtesy... Okay, so, uh, well, yes. One can feel dead to the world, stripped of motivation, stripped of all reason for living. Pretty drastic stuff, right? One has hit the wall, so to speak. There can also be despair and grief, at least until the individual has contacted the bedrock of his or her being. So there is a disassociation from that essential, eternal self. And until that essential, eternal self is reconnected with, there is grief, despair, hit, feeling of having hit a wall. Which is a little bit echoing what I felt or thought about from the reversed Rider Waite Smith deck, but differences are also there, right? Uh, this is the wet way, in quotes, the wet way. Our path of evolution through the soul's descent in descent and dissolution into matter. So this is the, evol the soul's evolution by first coming into physical form and being as this as the book says, also entombed within the body. Yeah, When we die, the soul becomes liberated, but it becomes entombed in a body, is one way of understanding the experience of being a spirit in a human body, having a human experience. Without having an answer to this question, what is the question? What is the true reason I came into this incarnation? What is the reason that I'm here in this body? Without an answer to that question, all of our human adventures seem vain, superficial, useless, repetitive, and idiotic. Much of our daily human experience can feel unworthy of a creature made in the image of God. Can you get the, Can you understand that? Have you ever felt that? Have you felt like, well, yeah, I'm having these day-to-day -day experiences, but if I am God, have, am, if I am an essence of God having these experiences, then what is the point of all this stuff? Have you ever felt that? Have you ever wondered that for yourself? Many of us do. And that can sometimes lead us into what is come, what is called the dark night of the soul. So, until the work of unearthing the prime motive is complete, nothing in the external world will make any sense. So, how was my day? Um, today was a day that actually might have reflected some of that. Um, my mother and I and our, her caretaker, after having breakfast, breakfast... Things were really rushed for me in the morning because I had a hard time getting out of bed. I'd wanted to get out of bed about 15 minutes earlier. And so I was, my time felt a little bit squished. Being able to get up, have breakfast, do my spread, 
and come back down and gather my mom and her caretaker and get them up to breakfast. But I did it and I felt a little bit compressed for time, but things were going, up, going well. And then we made the decision to <clears throat> do what we had planned the night before, to go down, find a taxi, let the taxi take us to da -da -da -da, the ABBA Museum, because my mom likes ABBA, um, the caretaker likes ABBA, I like ABBA, so we thought we'd go see the museum and then see what we could do afterwards. So we went in, we got down, and there was this conflict that was not overt but there between me and my mom's caretaker, assistant, whatever we want to call her. Um, the caretaker wanted to be in charge. And so she, she was doing things like take, would not let me push the wheelchair, which is fine, I suppose. Um, was wanting to make the decisions without being responsible for the decisions. And I don't, <clears throat> I can feel the tendency for me to put blame out there to put blame on the tension out on the other. And I know that I must have been, I am responsible for half of that tension. And when I noticed that, I every time I noticed that what I did was I decided I was going to disengage. I wasn't gonna fight. I wasn't gonna let her irritation be significant. So when she was irritated that, no, 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 it has to be this, it has to be that, no, 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 you're wrong, whatever. <clears throat> I let her do her thing and just waited for the next cycle events of events to begin, if that makes sense. Um, we got down to the museum and she wanted to push my mother around, which is okay. But as, because I was... Why, would, why was she wanting to take over again? Because I was involved in trying to fix these um, audio. Um, um, what do we call those? <laughs> when you go to a museum and they have an audio uh, guide. So there were these little wands which were audio guides. And you'd go up to a station, you'd hit the wand on the station, and you'd bring it to your ear, and you'd hear the description of what you were seeing. <clears throat> And so there were volume problems and you had to stick the thing in your ear. And my mom was, the first time or two, was, it felt strange to her. She didn't get the, the wand in her ear far enough for her to hear. The volume needed to be adjusted. So I was trying to do that. I was involved in doing that. When the caregiver felt like she had already accomplished all of that, but my mom was not happy with the way she had accomplished that. So I was going in there to fix it. And so what the caregiver decided that was that she was in charge now. So she was going to roll my mom around with the museum and pay no attention to where I was. Because after I'd done all of that for them, I was now behind. And so I did the wand and I started listening. And then I noticed that they were gone. <laughs> while I was listening. It was like, okay. So I went to look for them and I saw them and I said, I'm back here. And th she took off again. It was like, okay. So eventually we got through the museum and things were eventually okay. We had lunch, everything was okay. But every so often I felt this little burst of from her. Not actual aggression, but passive aggression, you might say. In fact, it actually probably was passive aggression. Um, and so I felt, I think, perhaps, not despair, not like nothing was, my life was not worthwhile or anything like that, but still I might have been feeling, um, yes, I was feeling my ego becoming a problem. I felt that my ego wanted to respond, wanted to fight back. And I didn't want to engage in that because it wouldn't have helped. And because I didn't want to engage in that, the experience of the museum, for example, was not nearly as interesting or as fun as it might have been if we had all been together and we were all going together as I imagined in my head. Um, <clears throat> we got out to lunch. 
and she was the caregiver was half happy and half unhappy with the choices that I helped to make for my mother's meal. I mean, we went there a little bit too. Um, getting in a taxi, wanting to ride around and the town with the taxi driver. Every so often I felt this burst of irritation from her, which colored a lot of the experience for me. Um, we got home, we got home, we got to the ship, we got back on the ship, we went up and we went our separate ways for a couple of hours, which was good. Um, we got dressed, we went down to this wonderful gala dinner, that was all fine. And then she decided she wanted to go off on her own and she wanted to leave my, her, my mom with me, which was all fine, which was all fine. Everything else was good. Um, during the dinner, it was a wonderful dinner, uh, wine pairing, the wine was explained by the representative from the vineyards in uh, Washington State in the United States. It was all wonderful. And um, that, that guy came up to our table. They went up, up to most of the tables, came up to my table and started talking to me about how wonderful it was that I was doing this with my mother and how, how important it is to have these times of interaction and interrelationship and all this wonderful stuff. And I felt my ego being patted very nicely, um, which was nice. I also felt, I also know that it was ego being patted, but it was nice. And then I went up, came up, my mom got ready for bed. I watched her and I sat with and near her as I waited for the caregiver giver to come back from enjoying some music, which is cool. So perhaps what those times of my ego irritation that I'm describing, perhaps that's what this was about. Not the three of swords heartbreak, not the nine of swords anxiety, not the 10 of swords end of all function, but ego irritation, I think might be one aspect that is here, which is um, Saturn in Leo, I believe, if I remember, if I recall correctly. Um, so Leo, yeah, I am Leo. Leo is a lot about ego, the good part and the bad part. Ego has a, health, a healthy role for us in society. Now, ego can be very helpful and creative and able to organize things and able to move us forward to empower our willpower. But sometimes ego can be disturbed and can be irritated and want to fight back. And so I felt some of that and maybe that's what that reversed four of swords was in this deck. And so this need, this, the meaning for balance, being able to balance the wants, the desires, the actions of the day, the fires and the waters of the day, the emotions and the passions of the day, which are emotional, more cups suits, more cups, but still the, that balancing act, right? And maybe this card was not so much an obstacle, but an, uh, something that would help me. Something that would help is, would, was the king of cups. And if I were able to keep my emotional balance, which I think I was fairly successful most of the time, I did give a couple of scathing glances, but I don't think I really engaged verbally. So, but then I was able to return to the vision. Where are we going? What are, what is the plan? What, where, what direction do I want to be heading in? So that's what I think I've got from today. And you heard me processing that for you, with you, right now. And I think as I was speaking with you, I've got a better sense of this card in reverse, a better sense that I had before I began this video. What do you think? Let me know. So friends, hit the like button, the thumbs up, so that YouTube knows that you like this video and other people might like this video. Um, hit the subscri 
subscribe to the channel if you haven't and hit the alarm bell so you know when I upload videos. I try to do it about once a day. Um, I lost internet contact for uh, several hours this evening and I'm not sure that it will stay connected to the internet. We're going through some um, parts of Northern Europe that con connectivity is not easy, apparently. So we might lose connectivity. This video might be late. So hit the alarm bell so you get notifications. And comment below, what do you think? What, how would you read this Four of Swords? Do you, did, you see how, did you see a connection between this and the experiences I had during the day? Let me know in the comments below. And friends, if you want a private reading, my Instagram account is linked in the description box, so you can hop over to Instagram and send me a direct message, and we can work out a private reading for you. And friends, now, as always, I wish you love, joy, well-being, and pure awareness. Thank you.